Hello, everybody. Welcome to St. Joseph's at this 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Father. And as we gather as the family of God, we together turn to our Savior, Jesus Christ. And as we first call to mind our sins, so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. You forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. You feed us with your body and your blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples a feast of rich food and choice wines, juicy, rich food, and pure, choice wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples. 
the web that is woven over all the nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every face. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we looked to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. For the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The word of the Lord. A letter, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I know how to live in humble circumstances. I, al- I know also how to live with abundance. In every circumstance and in all things, I have learned the secret of being well fed and of going hungry, of living in abundance and of being in need. I can do all things in him who strengthens me. Still, it was kind of you to share in my distress. My God will fully supply whatever you need in accord with his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father, glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, and light 
enlighten the eyes of our heart so that we may know what is the hope that belongs to our be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus again in reply spoke to the chief priests and the elders of the people in parables saying, the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast but they refused to come. A second time, he sent other servants saying, tell those invited, behold, I have prepared my banquet. My calves and fattened cattle are killed and everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold of his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, the feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go out therefore into the main roads and invite to the feast whomever you find. The servants went out into the streets and gathered all they found, bad and good alike, and the hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to meet the guests, he saw a man there not dressed in a wedding garment. The king said to him, My friend, how is it that you came in here without a wedding garment? But he was reduced to silence. Then the king said to his attendants, Bind his hands and feet, and cast him into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Many are invited, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Big wedding celebrations, not to mention receptions. Not too big of a thing these days, are they? No thanks to COVID. But certainly in the time of Jesus, the people knew how to throw wedding receptions. How to celebrate husband and wife coming together as one. You probably heard it before that those receptions would sometimes go on for days and days. In that culture, it was such that if you were invited, you were expected to be there. There was no, well, I have other plans. It would have been a slap in the face to the family of the bride and groom if you were invited, but you didn't show up. Well, given its rich symbolism, a wedding is often used in the scriptures again and again and again to refer to God's kingdom. For the Israelites, the chosen people, they had this understanding that God had extended this invitation to them, his chosen people, to come to this great wedding banquet. The messianic wedding feast that God prepared himself. So in this parable today, again, Jesus is talking, as he did last week, and I said it's important to figure out who Jesus is addressing the parable to, to figure out the message he's trying to say. He addresses it to the religious leaders, to those who were in charge. It was at the instigation of those religious leaders that the people, the chosen people, largely rejected that invitation that Jesus as the Messiah was given to them to come to the feast. But God does not give up. And what happens in this parable? 
Again, he sends out others to invite more people to come to replace those that rejected the invitation. And where do they go? Out to the roads, outside the city. Who would have been there? The sinners, the tax collectors, the prostitutes, the pagans, sinners. The thing is, the chief priests and the elders, those religious leaders, the entire Jewish people, every person for that matter, was a sinner. But those who were notorious and public sinners, they knew it. Everybody knew it. The problem is God's people could hide behind that title, the chosen people. Just like we as Christians can sometimes do as well. We hide behind that title, Christian. Well, I'm a good person. But Jesus wants to show us that we're all in need of this mercy that his son freely offers us as the Messiah. God alone can forgive sins. And denying our sins or not repenting of them really amounts to what happens later in this parable when one of the guests does come in but he's found without this so-called wedding garment at the wedding banquet. We hear how poorly that turns out, don't we? Kicked out. Certainly from a Christian perspective, this wedding banquet refers to the church so beautifully because we hear how the father prepares this banquet for his son and all of these guests are invited. And the Father prepares this banquet in which we at Mass receive the very body and blood of Jesus as the choicest of foods that we can receive. The greatest of banquets. You know, the church has often been, as it's often been remarked, is not a museum for saints, but a hospital for sinners. And in a favorite image of Pope Francis, the church is a field hospital. He writes these words. The thing the church needs most today is the ability to heal wounds and to warm the hearts of the faithful. It needs nearness, proximity. I see the church as a field hospital after battle. Fix that image in your mind, a field hospital after a battle. You know, people aren't coming with their minor complaints like achy knees or even something like diabetes. They're coming with major traumas that require amputation to sustain their lives. Real problems, like our problems. You know, this broken world that we live in needs a place to be able to bring our real injuries so we don't have to hide them. You know how much we like to go to the doctor, right? Ignore them, put them off. Don't pay any attention to them. We need a place where we can come to bring those sins and problems and struggles and know that there is medicine for them. We need an emergency room more than a courtroom like the Pharisees wanted. We need healing more than judgment like we're so quick to do. Therefore, the confessional, Pope Francis says, is not a torture chamber, but the place in which the Lord's mercy motivates us to do better. The Lord gave me an image of this just the other day, whether that confessional is indoors or outdoors, it's really the mudroom where you kick off all that crud, where you take off your coat, where you wash up before you come to the wedding banquet. My friends, it's not enough for us just to say that we're Catholic. It's not enough to just say, I pray, I go to Mass, that's good. 
But the Christian life above all is about growing in the image and likeness of God, about becoming more like Jesus, growing in real holiness. That's why the sacrament of reconciliation is so tremendously important. It's in confession that we can stop pretending like we're supposed to have it all together or we need to have it all together or should have had it all together by now. It's in the confessional that we can hold up the mirror and really take a good look and stop running from our sins or trying to distract ourselves from them or entertain ourselves to death so we don't pay them attention. It's a place where we can really admit them, to find forgiveness for them, to be free of them by repenting of them. And you know, so few people go to confession these days. I'm sorry to say. It's not just because of COVID either. I think there's actually a pandemic of belief that goes something like this. Sin, if it exists, for us good people, isn't really so bad. But sin is a big deal. God the Father sent his son to die on the cross to forgive us our sins. Sin is a big deal. And that amazing grace that he offers us so freely comes to us to reconcile our sins in confession, to deal with them so that they're no more. Then when we've readied ourselves for the wedding banquet, we can come and receive our Savior in this holy banquet, the Eucharist, the bread of life, that which satisfies the deepest hunger that we all have within us. Jesus is truly present, and he extends the invitation to each and every one of us. Receive that invitation, be reconciled with him, and come. God bless you. Friends, let us now together stand and we profess the words of the Nicene Creed and pray together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. 
confidently we now offer our prayers to our compassionate Father in heaven. For the unity of the church, that all believers may share in the feast, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace among nations, that all people may live without fear, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick and suffering from COVID-19 and other serious illnesses, especially those who are hospitalized and dying at this time, may God grant, according to his divine will, grace and abundance to provide healing, comfort, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of those encountering fear in the midst of this pandemic, especially the people of our parish and local communities, may the Prince of Peace fill them with the lasting peace the world just cannot give. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the youth and young adults of St. Joseph Parish and School and all those in our local area, May God give them strength, wisdom, and peace of mind and heart during these challenging times. And may the Holy Spirit guide us in seeking ways to effectively reach them with the good news of Jesus and his church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of the parish whom we pray for in a special way at this Mass today. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of the intentions in our prayer basket, as well as those we now mention in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Generous God, you lavish your bounty on your people. Your Holy Spirit bids us for your mercy and blessing in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Hear and answer these, our prayers, through him who is Lord forever and ever. to me, all who labor in the heavy burden, and I shall give you rest. Take up my yoke and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you Yeah. 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin Mary. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us eternal life. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we offer the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him and with him and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. By way of reminder, especially because of the continuing outbreak at local nursing homes, allow me to remind you of the following. At this time, it's recommended for all parishioners receiving Holy Communion to do so in the hand as opposed to on the tongue. If you still choose to receive the Eucharist on the tongue, the priest or extraordinary minister of Holy Communion will pause and sanitize their hands after each communicant receiving in this manner. Thank you for your consideration and understanding as we seek to keep everyone safe while reverently worshiping together. Shepherd me, O oh God. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into Gently raise me and heal. 
righteousness and truth. My spirit shall sing the music of your name. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Though I should wander the valley of death, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Your rod and your staff, my comfort and my hope. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. You Set me a banquet of love in the face of hatred, crowning me with love beyond my power to hold. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. God is my shepherd, so nothing shall I want. I rest in the meadows of faithfulness and love. I walk by the Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, that I might serve you. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, that I might be renewed. So Let's
Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Our announcements this evening. Please note that the October 14th registration deadline is fast approaching for the annual Diocese of Harrisburg Women's Conference. This year it will be live streamed on Saturday, October 17th from 8.30 to 12.30. Registration is just $10. If you cannot participate on the 17th, you can get a recorded version of the conference if you register by the deadline, which is the 14th. Visit the diocesan website or see the bulletin for more information. A new speaker series is being offered by the diocese entitled Truth, Beauty, and Goodness. There are virtual presentations that will be given on Zoom once per month from October through June. Presenters from throughout the diocese will teach on apologetics, saints, scripture, art, music, Catholic culture, Catholic moral teaching, life issues, prayer, and spirituality. The series is intended for all people who are interested in fostering greater knowledge, understanding, and appreciation of the Catholic faith. The first session is coming up on October 19th from 7 to 8.30 p.m. Please see our parish website or Facebook page for more information and to register. With things being so different this year, several churches in our area have partnered to better serve the high school students of our congregations. The partnership is called the Danville Student Collective, or DSC for short. DSC is about gathering those responsible for youth ministry at the various churches in order to support one another with ideas and prayer. Also, DSC is about bringing Christian teens together for occasional combined events. One such event is coming up. This Friday, October 16th, is Danville's homecoming. Given the current situation, DSC wants to help our high school students to celebrate. Please join us the, this Friday at Iron Mill Church for the fifth quarter. More information is on the parish website and Facebook page. Finally, as some of you already probably know, Cody has been absent from his duties for several weeks now as our parish organist due to an extended severe illness. Recently, I was able to be in touch with him, and due to his symptoms, he has made the difficult decision to resign effective immediately. He does wish this were otherwise and that he could continue here at St. Joseph's. He really, really enjoyed it here. And Cody's been a true gift to our parish. Please continue to keep him in your special prayers during this time of healing. And of course, we'll now begin a search for a new parish organist. You can pray to St. Cecilia if you'd like. That's the patron saint of musicians. That's who got us Cody last time. So we'll see who the Lord sends us this time. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Our prayer to St. Michael. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls, amen. Thanks. 
Creator, triumphantly raised, who fashioned and made us, protected and stayed us, by guiding us on to the end of our days. God's honors are ours, your light goes before us, a pillar of fire shining forth in the night, till shadows are vanished and darkness is banished. Travel from light into 